The challenge for this video is to take this elf on the shelf, turn him into a stop motion animation puppet, and then animate him uh, dancing. So the key to any stop motion puppet is to have some kind of armature inside that lets you pose uh, frame by frame and create the animation. So the more advanced version of this is to have, you know, a professionally made ball and socket armature, but I don't have that ability, so I'm gonna use wire. And the most basic of armatures will just have wire all inside. But I'm gonna take it one step more advanced and use um, these blocks that I have. And this is a chest block and a hip block, and what it'll let me do is join them with wires, and I can put wires in these holes, screw them in, tighten them, and these will hold the wires together inside the puppet. So I really don't know what's gonna happen inside of this guy, I just gotta open him up. This is normally the hips, with the legs coming up this way, but if I flip it and treat it like the chest block, then I can go up in here, then this would act as the, unless the legs came out here. So this is just problem solving right now. Um, it's always better to have a plan <laughs> than to wing it. So the real challenge is that the legs and arms are attached with a really thin seam. There's actually no way to get you know, from the body through to the legs. I do not know what's happening in here. Okay, I just have to take a piece of wire and start poking around. So I've wiggled this wire through this stitching and now it runs into the lead. So that's starting to take shape. It's a little bouncy with just one of these thin wires. I might double up the thin wires, so there's two. So the way these blocks work is that once you have the wire in there, you just tighten her up, and now those wires are secured in there. Okay, so that's a good plan of attack for the legs. And what I'll do is I'll make the two lengths, I'll shove them in, and then I'll have the two loops up here that I'll attach in, tighten it all up. Okay, now for the upper body. I'm gonna use this as a chest block. I'll have to shove the wires through, like the legs, and looped in and into the holes up here. So the challenge is how do I get inside here to shove the wire through? I need to undo some more of these stitches. Oh. Okay, I think I have to cut this collar free and then you know flip it upside down. Okay. That might be as much as I want to open up that puppet. I can see the shoulder seams now in here. So I'm gonna to try to feed a wire through here and then through here by feel. <laughs> so I have the wire here, but it's very difficult to jab it through. Oh, I did it. Wire has made its way through the whole leg. Yeah, so that's pretty good with one wire. So I think doing two will be very controllable. So that's one leg successfully wired up. I have two wires going down into the seam. They run all the way down. So that's the legs that are done. Okay, I have all the limbs wired up. It was a super annoying process, but uh, not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. So I'll wire these individually into these holes, tighten them. Once these are in the puppet, like this, then I'll, you know, they'll be separated and I'll have to wiggle in a thicker wire to create the spine. I'll tighten it all up. Should be good to go. I'll put some filling back in and we'll, we'll sew it up. Okay, the wires that are running through the limbs are now secured into the hip and the chest blocks. And this is really starting to clean up. All right, the spine is in. These two blocks are connected. And this is always a super exciting step when building a puppet because you know now he's kind of fully formed, like it's one solid mass. Um, you can start to feel how this thing will animate. I gotta figure out how I wanna rig this puppet. And by rigging, I mean how I'm gonna attach something to his hips to keep him standing up. What I have to do is attach this rig to his butt. And what this will do is just let me plug in some wire here and I'll have a length of wire attached to the floor and that'll hold up the puppet. Yeah, that's pretty secure. Okay, so that's his rig. 
get this back in. Yeah, that'll mush around once I uh, stitch them back up. Gotta plump them up. Here it is, the final elf on the shelf stop motion puppet. It looks exactly how it started, which is perfect. That's what I want. I have no idea if I can animate some funny dancing with this, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's animate it. Here's a quick look at my animation setup. You can see it's pretty small. I don't need that much space. I have the camera here, nice and low. I have the elf puppet supported by this uh, single wire rig, which isn't the greatest, but I think it'll work. Yeah, I just sit here, animate the puppet, and I can see what I'm doing on my laptop there. That's pretty much it. Let's animate. As I'm animating this human puppet, every frame I'm starting with the hips. So my first move is to get those hips over. And then once I get the hips in place, then I work outward and worry about the rest of the body. So I'll make sure the legs are in place, then I'll move the upper body, then I'll move the head, and then I'll work outward through the arms down to the hands. So every frame is just that routine of starting with the hips and moving outward. So here's the finished floss dance, and I've made it loop back into the start so I can just play on forever. And I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's okay. There's a lot of things I would fix um, if it were a better puppet <laughs> and I had better rigging. But I think for the quality of the puppet, I think it's pretty good. This one is called the hype dance or the shoot dance, something like that, and I'll play it right now. So you can see it has quite a bit of life to it. I really like this one. <laughs> and the one thing I want to point out in the animation is watch this back leg here. Um, this is the leg that takes the weight and springs back up, so just watch that leg. So there's a nice bit of spring to it. And what I'm doing here, so watch this back leg. I'll back up and you can see he comes down, makes contact. Next frame compresses. So that compression is super important. And then the next frame is a slight bounce up. So it's take the weight and spring it back up. Super important. That leg sells this whole animation. Here's a third dance, and this is the one made popular by Roy Purdy. So let's check it out. <laughs> and I think it turned out really good. I was worried about this one because it's such a complicated dance, but my approach was to hit the key poses nice and sharp and live in them for a couple frames and get to the next one fast and live in that for a couple frames. So if I back up here, you know, I'm hitting this key pose, living in it for a couple frames, hitting that key pose, living in it for a couple frames that pose, living in it for a couple frames. So when it plays, um, you just read these nice sharp key poses. I also want to mention these legs. Um, they swing back and forth, it's like a little loop, but I got a little spicy <laughs> with these legs and I let like one push and then the other one go. So there's kind of this overlap, so check it out. So that adds a lot of life to this dance. It's not just twinning the legs. So there's this nice little like wave to it. Here's a good opportunity to talk about adding something interesting to every frame. So I have this arm swipe move <laughs> with a step. And if I back up, you can see that, you know, big arm movement, foot comes up, head goes. And you can feel that when you play it, that things, they have an overlap to them. So that arm and leg and head aren't going all at the same time. There's a feeling of arm, foot, head, and it adds uh, texture to the animation. Here's the fifth and final dance. It's the dab dance. Let's take a look. So I think this one's okay. It was a little tough to get this dance out of this puppet. Um, but I think I did a good job of, you know, hitting those poses and then uh, it's a fun little bounce he has going on. Um, but in looping it, I was a little tough to track these extended arms. If you watch these uh, extended arms here, they kind of like double bounce when the pose hits, so watch. Which is, eh, it kind of bugs me. I might smooth that out in post-production. But yeah, overall, pretty happy. 
that concludes the animation part of this project. I'm going to take this footage, I'm going to key out all this green stuff, and I'm going to insert the elf into some Christmassy backgrounds that I'm going to film. I don't think I'll get into any of that, it's a bit technical and boring. This is the first video I've made in this style of puppet building and stop motion animation. I know this is a weird format to film in. I'm actually like screen recording my computer right now, so I know this is kind of awkward like looking in like this. But yeah, leave a comment and let me know what other stop motion kind of stuff you'd like to see. Um, I really want to keep making videos like this. Thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in the next stop motion video. <laughs> Goodbye.